Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's talk about earthquakes and what they tell us about the interior of the Earth. There are three different kinds of earthquake waves. We have what we call S waves, P waves, and L waves. The S waves and the P waves, they tend to travel through the Earth, so they start at some site where an earthquake occurs, and they travel through the Earth in all different directions. And on stations along the Earth in all different places will typically catch those earthquake waves and record them when they arrive. The third kind of wave, the L waves, they're, they're called surface waves. They travel around the surface of the Earth. They travel from the side along the surface, and they're the waves that cause ripples on the surface of the Earth like that, which cause a lot of damage as buildings and objects sway back and forth, and if they're structural, not very sound, they will collapse under the tremendous energy release from these surface waves. But the most important waves for astronomy are the S waves and the P waves as they travel through the Earth because they tell us a lot about what, what is the structure like inside the Earth. The S waves are also called shear waves. They tra they, they're transverse waves. In other words, the particles through which the wave travel, in this case the rock and the metal that's inside the Earth, that will they will move up and down like this as the energy of the wave travels in the direction of the wave. P waves are primary waves, which are, by the way, the fastest of all the earthquake waves. They travel kind of like waves in the air. It compresses it, it compresses the material in the same direction as the motion of the energy of the wave. So as the wave travels in this direction, the compression is in this direction, and so that's how the wave moves through the Earth. Those are the fastest waves. So those are also called longitudinal waves. Now the difference between them is that S, S waves, as they get to a portion of the interior of the Earth where there's a liquid, such as the liquid portion of the core, they cannot travel through that portion. Because they are traveling like this, they need to move the, the material to which they travel to the perpendicular direction as the mov movement of the energy. When you get to a liquid, like water, or in this case, molten core, it cannot do that, so those waves tend to stop right at the border. What happens is, when we have listening stations over here, we collect both the P waves and the S waves because you can see when you draw a line from the source of the earthquake to where the listening stations are, they do not need to travel to the liquid portion of the core, so both P waves and S waves will arrive there. But if we go a little bit further this direction, where the waves have to travel through the core right there, only P waves will arrive on the other side. All the S waves will stop at the boundary because they cannot traverse any further. That was the big clue that we had that told us that the core of the Earth had to be molten. Now, the reason why we know that there's a solid core right here at the center of the Earth is because the speed at which the waves travel through the liquid portion and the, and the solid portion is different. And so when we measure the time that it took for the waves to travel these directions or these distances, Depending upon what portion of the travel was through the liquid portion and what portion of the travel was through the solid portion, from that we can figure out how big the liquid portion and the solid portion had to be. In addition to that, we also know that when there's, a trans when there's a transition from the mantle to the liquid core, from the liquid core to the solid core, whenever there's transition of energy waves like that, they tend to bend or refract. And we can also calculate when they arrive on the other side how much they bended and how much they refracted. And from that we can also figure out the exact size of the solid core at the center and the liquid core around it, and as well as the size of the mantle around that. So earthquake waves was really the key to helping us understand the interior of the Earth. Again, the three waves, the S waves are the ones that only make it through the mantle. They will stop dead at the portion where the core is a molten metal right there. They will not travel through that. P waves will travel both through solid, liquid, and the plastic portion of the mantle. And then we have the L waves, which simply travel around the surface, which cause the Earth's surface to ripple, carrying the energy along the edge like that. And of course, that rippling effect will slowly disseminate and become less and less. The energy will slowly dissipate as the waves go farther and farther away from the source. So the, the most, most damage is, of course, caused very close to the source of the waves themselves. So that's very interesting. Now when we travel to the moon, we put devices, listening devices on the surface of the moon to try and figure out if there were earthquake waves on the moon itself. They did record some motion, some seismic motion, but then they figured out that was simply because of the impact from meteors that hit the, the moon's surface. They do not think that any of the activity that they recorded was because of internal activity itself. So that was a clue to let us know that the interior of the moon was probably geologically dead, 
but on the Earth, it's still, it's still a very big planet, and there's still a lot of activity going on inside, and the different portions of the interior are either metal, liquid, or solid, or mantle, rock-like material. We're able to figure those things out by simply studying the amount of waves that come through and where they travel to the Earth's surface, or to the Earth's interior, we can figure out exactly the structure of the Earth. Very cool way to do that, and we owe our, our knowledge of the interior of the Earth by studying these earthquake waves.